Greetings friends, Jawless Paul here. In this video, we're gonna talk about some duo boons. We're gonna rank them from S to D. These are not all the duo boons. These are the duo boons that are not related to cast, not related to cast specifically. Um, so that takes out about 12 duo boons and what you're left with is these 16. So we're gonna talk about them and rank them. Of course, this is just my opinion, what I like to use and what I think is particularly strong. Uh, as far as the tiers and, and what they each mean, S tier is core duo boons, like a build uses these duo boons as like a, an essential piece uh, to the build. So these are gonna be in, instrumental to a specific build. Without them, you're pretty much crippling yourself. And then A tier are nearly there. Like they are, they're very, very impactful. They could make or break a run, but they're not essential. They're not the core boons to a build. B tier is, are, are ones that are just, they're just nice to have. They're, they do something that's, that's helpful, uh, but they're not gonna be core for anything. They're kind of like secondary effects that you might wanna have that will provide some extra damage or utility, but they're just nice to have. You really don't need them ever. C tier is just they're there. They're, they're they're it's a duo boon that you can get, I guess. Uh, they're not anything uh, too exciting. They're nothing that you are going to go after necessarily. They're just oh, if it pops up, hey, it's a green boon. Let's take it. And then finally, D tier is I, I, I struggle to find any real purpose for it. So we're going to go through these. And as you're going to see, most of these are very good. You're going to you're going to see a lot at the top, but there are a few notable ones at the bottom. And I wanted to talk about those. So let's get right into it. OK, let's start with with this one. This is calculated risk. So let's take a look at calculated risk. Your foes ranged attack projectiles are slower. So foe projectile speed is reduced to 50 percent. So there are a lot of projectiles in this game. They, they'll they be coming at you. Uh, and so this reduces their speed by 50%. Is this nice to have? Absolutely, this is nice to have. There's no question that you, you'll you be able to dodge them better uh, if they are slower. However, I wouldn't say that this is even in the nice to haves. I would put this in C tier. Just it's there. It might show up you might want to reduce projectiles by 50%. And then there's some argument to be made that like this could really help in like a really high heat situation in the Hades, uh, the Hades fight at the end. This could really help with the spear toss, I suppose, but I never go for it. And I don't think it provides that strong of an effect. And sometimes the slow projectile is actually worse because you dodge out of the way, but it just keeps going. And so it has a negative positional effect because there's an area of the screen that you just can't go to because the projectiles aren't leaving that area. Does that make sense? Next, we have Cold Fusion. Cold Fusion is the, oh, sorry. This is the Athena Dionysus duo boom, by the way. All right, so Cold Fusion makes your jolted status. Instead of the effect disappearing after an enemy attacks, it'll just keep going for 10 seconds. And this can be very good if an enemy attacks very quickly. It is pretty good. It does provide some decent damage. So I'm gonna put that, I'm just gonna keep it right here in B tier. It's, it's pretty nice to have. The reason why I don't put it up higher is because typically, typically with a Zeus build, you wanna have a lot of Zeus. You wanna have a lot of lightning bolts going off, a lot of chain lightning going off. And so you're usually gonna be reapplying your jolted very quickly anyway. And so it has a diminishing return. It really doesn't provide as much as you think it might because you really are applying jolted a lot. All right, let's get into the spicy one here. This is Curse of Longing, the Ares Aphrodite duo boon. All right, your doom effect continuously strike weak foes. Successive hit damage is 50%. So if you compare this with Cold Fusion, uh, where it just lasts 10 seconds and the enemy can continually get hit by that effect, you can kind of see there's a there's a pretty big downside to Curse of Longing. Your doom effects reduce by 50% each tick. It, it'll continuously strike, but it goes down by 50%. Now, the problem with that is similar to the, to the Zeus problem that you are probably going to be applying doom regularly. And the curse 
delay is 1.1 seconds, right? You do a lot of stuff in 1.1 seconds in Hades, I've noticed. And if you get the, let's see, there's a, there's a boon that slows it down even more. Impending Doom increases another half second on it. So it's 1.6 seconds if you have that, and it's 50% each time. Sure, you're gonna get some extra damage out of that, maybe, but as with Cold Fusion, if you have a curse-based build, it's, it's going to apply it regularly. I think that this is probably the most overrated duo boon in the game. A lot of people talk about how much they love Curse of Longing. If you love it, that's great. I don't, you know, don't. <laughs> it's got some utility. If you have one of those builds where maybe you just have the Ares Revenge boon, that could be good, I guess. It's a, it's a nice to have. I, it's a somewhat meh nice to have, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put it down at the bottom because I need something to go into D tier. I really don't, I would never go for this boon, ever. If you want to apply Doom, you want to apply it you know, regularly. I'd love to hear your comments. So many people have opinions about this game and that is super, super cool. Leave your comments below. All right, now we've got Curse of Nausea. Your hangover effects deal damage faster, going from 0.5 seconds to 0.35 seconds. So this is two ticks per second to uh, almost three ticks per second. If you, you know, kind of roughly, you want to think about it that way. So it increases your damage by a very, very substantial amount. This is uh, this is very good. I put it in A tier. Extremely, extremely good damage. If you're in a Dionysus build, this is going to help a lot. It's going to be a lot of extra damage coming out, um, going from half a second to 0.35 seconds. So I put it in A tier. Very, very strong. Um, I don't put it in S tier because it isn't a. It doesn't change any core mechanics. It just increases the damage, which is good but it's, it doesn't provide as much damage as some of the other boons that we're gonna be talking about. Speaking, speaking of those boons, let's take a look at this one. After you deflect, briefly gain 20% chance to deal critical damage, so deadly reversal, and it lasts two seconds. This is busted. This is a very, very good effect, as you can imagine when you are, if you have any sort of deflect, whether it's your dash or your attack or your special, you are going to be deflecting a lot and then you just get that base 20% chance to deal critical damage on all all of your stuff. It's it's insane. It's totally totally insane. You should absolutely go for this if you are playing with Athena or Artemis. It's always going to be good. I think it can be a core mechanic if if you're if you're going to play Athena, you might as well grab Artemis so that you can get that sick 20% crit crit chance. Give it a give it a shot. Give it a try. All right. So we have exclusive access. Any boons you find have superior effects. So all boons will start out at a rarity of epic. Um, this is this is very nice to have. Uh, one of the reasons why this is so nice to have is because this this actually in a kind of a sneaky way makes it so you are more likely to get duo boons and legendary boons in addition to the epic boons. And the reason that is, is because when you open up a boon pack, the the number of potential boons that it can show you is, is reduced significantly. Normally it, it could show you normal or rare or epic boons. It gets rid of all the rare and normal boons. So you get more epic boons and because there aren't as many boons total, it gives you more duo boons if you're eligible for it. Of course, you have to be eligible for those, uh, but it, it gives it, it raises the likelihood that you will find a uh, legendary or duo boon as well. That being said, rarity is nice. I think it's overvalued though. You know, we all we all want to get those purple boons, and it does have a nice effect. But truthfully, palms can can fill the gap between a normal and a rare boon or a rare and an epic boon. So I don't rate this as an essential, but it's very, very nice to have. So I think it's solidly in the B, the B tier. Um, will provide a lot of benefit, especially if you get it early. I'd say if you get it in Tartarus or even early Asphodel, it maybe bumps up to A tier, but in general, you don't always find it in Tartarus, and it's certainly not something that you're gonna beeline for in a regular build, in my opinion. Maybe some of you do, and I've tried it a few times, but it, it's kind of risky. You're, you're doing Dionysus and Poseidon, which I, there's not a lot of synergy between those two uh, as it is. So 
that's where I that's where I rank exclusive access. Next, we have Heartrend. All right, in Heartrend, your critical effects deal even more damage to weak foes. The bonus critical damage versus weak is plus 150 um, percent. This is a really nice boost if you are doing any sort of crit build. It can be a little bit tricky to throw on Aphrodite to a to a build where you're using a lot of crit, but if you can manage that, and there are cer there are certain builds that do very very well with this, Heartrend is amazing. Very very good increase to your crits. Your crits become even bigger. You know they're already enormous. Let's make them even bigger, and Heartrend certainly does that. So I like this boon a lot. I think it's it's very very strong. It really adds to your damage. I don't feel like it's a core. It's a core boon. It doesn't quite fit that slot for me, but it does a lot of good things. A lot of good things happen with with Heartrend. So that's where it goes in A tier. Next, we have Low Tolerance. All right, Low Tolerance. Your hangover effect stack even more times against weak foes. So you get bonus hangover stacks of bonus three hangover stacks. Now, this this is pretty good as you as you probably have seen, if you use Dionysus, you want to put Dionysus on a fast attacking weapon. You should be applying lots of stacks of hangover anyway. And so the three bonus stacks, if you are building it correctly, should be, you should be getting in that six, seven, eight uh, range occasionally. The problem with low tolerance is that it is very occasionally that that actually happens, that you actually get it up to eight. And only a certain specific weapons that are very, very fast can get you to that level. Um, and so that reduces the utility of this quite a bit. Um, even getting up to five stacks with a fast weapon can be challenging, um, short of like a Chiron build or a, or a build like with the fist or the rail. Um, but with those, it can be hard to apply weak unless you put it on the dash. And there's, there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. But I would say it's very, very hard to get it to that seven or eight stacks before it starts to, you know, the old ones start to expire and it just drops down. So I actually rank this a little bit lower. It's a nice to have. It is not a core boon. Of course, there are certain weapons that this is amazing on, and it is kind of a core thing with some some builds. But because it's just so hard to get those eight stacks, I put it down in B. I don't think it I don't think it does uh, as much as I would like it to. Um, if maybe it made the, the stacks last a little bit longer, too, that would make it better. But as it is, it's just really hard to get to that number. Next, Merciful End. Merciful End. My goodness. Your attacks that can deflect immediately activate your doom effect. And on top of that, you get 40 bonus damage. You're welcome. Here's, here's your 40 bonus damage. So Merciful End makes your Ares doom effects hit so, so very hard. The, the way that you typically do this is you get Ares on your uh, special or your attack, whichever one you are going to be using more. And typically it's your attack because you're going to be doing a dash attacks. And I'll explain how in a sec. You're going to get Athena on your special because you need to have Athena's attack or special and Ares attack or special to be eligible for it. It's very, very hard to be eligible for it. And then you want to get Athena on your dash. Then what you can do is you can dash attack or if you have the fist, you can dash special into enemies and you are applying the doom and then immediately it's going off and you can dash 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 attack dash attack back and forth and just do so so much damage with this with this boon this is definitely a core boon this so many builds are built around this thing it's it's a fantastic fantastic source of damage if you haven't tried a merciful end build i recommend you know, try it on the fist. The fist is a great merciful end weapon. It's so, it's so, so good. Give it a try. Tons of damage. Incredible. All right. Speaking of incredible, now we have Sea Storm. Let's talk about Sea Storm. Your knockaway effects also cause foes to be struck by lightning. And it has 40 lightning damage. It's the duo with Poseidon. This is the dynamic duo of the game, in my opinion. The Zeus and Poseidon go together like peas and carrots, like peanut butter and jelly however you want to say it they are fantastic together 
all, if you get this duo boon, you're, the game the game will play itself <laughs> to some extent. It's so, so good. One fun effect with this is that even if it isn't a Poseidon knockaway effect, it'll still it'll still go off. So if you have the shield, uh, the shield has a lot of knockback, which makes Sea Storm very, very good for the shield just in general. But typically what you're going to do is you're going to get a you're going to get Poseidon on your weapon. You're going to get Zeus, maybe the Zeus special so that you get lightning bolts. You don't need to get the special. You can. It does work with the attack, but I'll explain why the, the lightning bolt boon is going to be better. And then you can find Sea Storm. So it's not too hard to find. And then you want to maybe get Poseidon's dash so that you get knockback effect on that. So really, you're going to want Zeus's special or his call. Those are the two lightning damage sources. Really, really great for Zeus to find. And you want to get a lightning, a lightning uh, boosting effect so that you can you're eligible for double strike. If you don't have Thunder Flourish, Dash or Zeus's aid, you're not going to find this, which is a chance that the lightning will strike twice, which, as you can imagine, that's pretty great. It's super, super good. This is one of those boons that like Merciful End, probably the strongest in the game. It makes you this insane uh, lightning, <laughs> lightning god. I guess Zeus Zeus is jealous by the end. And then if you can combine this with double strike with Zeus's legendary, where you're getting uh, extra bolts uh, that go off as as lightning goes off. It's just it just gets to be ridiculous. The amount of lightning that you're summoning super super fun maybe maybe my favorite duo boon uh for non-cast duo boon i should say the effect is just so spectacular i love the, i love the way lightning bolts look it's got to be s tier and i think it's it as far as like damage goes it, it probably can compete with merciful end and honestly i could put it ahead of merciful end simply because merciful end is hard to find it's hard to get merciful end it's very very restrictive the boons required for that you need the attack and the special of the two gods so that's where i put sea storm it's a fantastic thing go go check it out if you haven't already all right smoldering air this is the aphrodite zeus duo boon smoldering air your call charges up automatically but is capped at 25 percent and you gain one percent every 0.2 seconds uh this this is an awesome awesome boon if you like calls which you should <laughs> calls provide a ton of utility and damage sometimes both this is tremendous say you put this on zeus's call you get tons of damage if you put this on aphrodite's call you are you're charming enemies all the time which is super fun you can charm asterius and have asterius kill theseus this is one of my favorite things to do i really just it just feels so good really this works with just about any call that you can think of it does it does great things so the better the call the better this is going to be i think it's really really a fun boon to go for i'm gonna put it like pretty close to the top of the a tier i think it's almost it's almost could be a build defining duo boon uh, it's so so close but because calls are kind of they're hard to to utilize sometimes i'm going to put it a little bit below s tier next next we have splitting headache hangover afflicted foes are more likely to take critical damage bonus critical chance per hangover stack 1.5 percent okay i struggled with this one a little bit i went back and forth it's probably the one duo boon that i that i moved around the most while i was making this list hangover afflicted foes are more likely to take critical damage 1.5 percent now what does that add up to? If the ideal situation happens, you've got five stacks, or say even you get, say even you get um, low tolerance as well. You've got eight stacks, eight times 1.5 is still not that much. It's kind of like about as good as a decent pressure points uh, situation. And you need to have the hangover on the enemy. So I actually don't rank this very high. I love crit, I love getting crit. But if you're if you've got this boon, you probably already have an Artemis boon and you're getting crit that way. And then it's just better to get Hunter's Mark and you're getting tons of crits anyway. So I don't actually rank this that all that high. I'm just going to keep it in B tier. It's a nice to have. Of course, it's nice to have that. Like, who doesn't love pressure points? But it's just like a slightly souped up version of pressure points that has a little extra requirement to it. So I don't actually love it all that much. I'm going to put it at the top of B tier. Crit, because crit is so strong in this game, it has to be at the top. 
but I don't I don't rank it as high as some of these other ones just because the damage output isn't that spectacular, truly. Next, we have Stubborn Roots. This is the Athena Demeter duo boon. While you have no death or stubborn defiance, your health slowly recovers. Life regeneration is one health every 0.8 seconds or so. So you get some health recovery when you're about to die. If you're about to lose, you're fighting the boss, this could give you some life regeneration that will bring you back from the brink of death. And for that reason, it's it's double-sided for me. It's good, but it's also bad. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, lose a little bit less, right? Lose a little bit less when you are when you have this duo boon. It doesn't have that strong of an effect, in my opinion, especially if you're doing death defiance. Stubborn defiance, I think you probably could bump it up to A tier since you do lose your death defiance. If you're playing it right, in my opinion, you should probably be losing your death defiance in every room and then letting it regenerate health with uh, with this boon. There, maybe that bumps it up into low A tier, but this just means that you are about to you're about to lose the run, and maybe it saves you. Maybe it saves you, and that's nice. It's nice to be saved, but I don't. I wouldn't go for this. It, if it ever comes along, I sometimes pick it up, but I most of the time would rather have more damage. Of course, if you're just starting out in the game, this looks very appealing and this is very nice to have, but you wouldn't be in this situation had you found one of these guys. You know what I'm saying? If you if you were doing enough damage to kill everything quickly, you don't need to regenerate your health when you're about to die. That's that's my that's my feeling about this one. <laughs> it, it provides some effect, sure, but it's it's at the bottom of B tier. Next, we have Sweet Nectar. Any palms of power you find are more effective. Bonus level of one from Sweet Nectar. This is nice to have. You have a lot of palms in the game that you're gonna be buffing your boons with, and that's a great way to stack damage. It's better for some boons than it is for others because of diminishing returns, especially like Artemis's attack and special. You get diminishing returns super, super fast. Pretty soon you're getting just like, you know, four or five percentage points of damage increased from this. So it's good. And especially if you find it early, it's kind of similar to exclusive access. I think I'm going to put it maybe just behind exclusive access here because it is a great way to boost your damage. Getting those extra palms is great. But I think that the diminishing returns doesn't it, it doesn't allow it to be up into the A tier. It does a lot of good stuff, but it's not going to be a core central thing or even something that that's going to be that impactful. And, and usually I find this in like the end of Asphodel or the start of Sticks or something. And it's like, oh, I got like two, two or three palms that it's going to hit. You just in order to get it in order to get the most benefit from it, you need to get it early. And then once again, same with Dionysus, it's kind of an awkward combination. Aphrodite and Poseidon, they don't exactly, you know, mesh all that well in terms of synergy. So the way that this actually works really well is with like Dionysus hangover builds or if you've got pressure points because each palm level is 1% crit, crit chance. So if you get this, you're, you can boost your crit chance very, very high, very quickly. I think it does have that benefit there, but it is, it's just gonna sit in B tier, maybe low A tier if you get it early enough. All right, all right, next we have Unshakable Metal. You cannot be stunned and resist some damage from bosses. Boss damage reduction is 10%. All right, so boss damage reduction 10%, that's about the same level as Athena's Athena's boon that reduces your damage was it bronze bronze skin I think uh, reduces damage that you take by about 10% if I'm not if I'm not mistaken yeah at, at epic level it does so it's about an epic bronze skin okay then the other effect is that you can't be stunned this is this is nice especially for weapons that have to be charged up so if you get one of the hammers that that lets you charge up attacks or say you're using a spin build, the, the spear spin attack. Not being stunned is what you want. You want to be able to get those attacks off even if an enemy hits you. There's nothing worse than charging up a spin and then having an enemy knock you out of that charge, right? It's, it's very, very painful. So that's nice. It's a nice effect, you know? It's it's decent. Uh, Unshakable Metal is, is decent. I'm not, I'm not, especially uh, fond of it. Have I ever gone for it specifically in a run? No, I have not. No, I have not. And it's it's a good defensive. It's a good defensive boon. It provides that benefit. 
but I just I just don't see it as a core of anything. It's right at the bottom of B tier. It maybe even could slip into C tier, uh, depending on your build. If you really want that uh, that charge up effect to be you know, un uninterruptible, you you would maybe maybe that would put it into B tier. But otherwise, it's probably high C tier, low B tier. I'm gonna put it I'm gonna put it high C tier, I guess. That's that's my take on that one. Next, vengeful mood. This is one of my favorite duo boons, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Your revenge, this is the Zeus Ares duo boon. Your revenge attacks sometimes occur without taking damage, and it's about every three seconds they go off. So <laughs> this boon is, has, is such a fun, nifty effect. I like it so much. It's a little bit, it's a little bit challenging to get. You need a Zeus core boon, a tier one boon, like the, the attack, the special, the cast, the dash, or aid. Um, and that's true of Ares as well. You don't need a curse uh, boon. You can use it with slicing shot, blade dash, or Ares aid. And then you also need a revenge boon for it to actually work with, right? You need something to go off. Um, and that could be any revenge boon. It could be Aphrodite's, Ares, Athena's, Demeter's, any of them. But you need you need that. And then this this boon is great for a specific kind of run that I really enjoy. It's it's the try to get as many revenge boons as you can, and then when you fight Hades, just set down the controller and see if see if you can get Hades to kill himself by hitting you. This is super super fun. I, I highly recommend it. And Vengeful Mood is one of the one of the core pieces to this. Now, do why why do we care about revenge boons? Like, what's the big deal with revenge boons? Well. I'll, I'll, let's let's talk about revenge. Let's talk about what what that looks like. <clears throat> so the heaven's vengeance. Let's just go with with Zeus's heaven's vengeance. The damage on a common heaven's vengeance is 80, and then if you go up to rare, it goes up to 120 sometimes. Epic, it goes up to 160, and then heroic. But you, you're not really going to get heroic all that much. And then it palms very well as well. You're getting lots and lots of extra damage. I've had Heaven's Vengeance in the 300 damage range uh, very, very easily, and these lightning bolts can go off as quickly as an enemy attacks you. So Heaven's Vengeance is huge. It also has a radius. It has a radius, which you can improve with high voltage. <laughs> so if you get high voltage, if you get double strike, this this one boon by itself does so much damage. It's it's absolutely bonkers. And then let's look at another one. Let's look at Aphrodite's revenge boon. After you take damage, damage nearby foes and inflict weak. All right, starts at 50 damage, goes up to about 75 or 100 and 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 further. Okay? So not only are you getting the weak effect, which is making enemies deal less damage, but but you're dealing a quite a big chunk of damage in a, in a decent size radius around you. So you, if you get Wave of Despair and Zeus, that's great. Then you can find Ares, then you can find Demeter, then you can find Athena, and you have an insane amount of damage that goes off th every three seconds. It is a huge burst of damage that you can get if you find enough revenge boons. So I think I think that this for style points, S plus S heroic, you know, way beyond any of the other ones. But in terms of practicality, you know, I, I'm going to put it at high A. I mean, it nearly gets to S, B, but you're just you're just not really designing builds around revenge all that much unless unless you're me. I like to do that because it's it's ridiculous and hilarious. But this this duo boon is such a good time. You really need to try it. You can get such big explosions of damage. Heck of a lot of fun. Okay, <laughs> there's there's my list. In retrospect, do I wanna do I want to adjust anything? I might move this, I might move cold fusion down just a bit. You know, I, I think I, I go back and forth between putting that there or there. I think I am gonna put it in C tier. And then this one, I'm gonna have a lot of hate about this one. I know it. I, I, people are gonna people are gonna be annoyed by this, but the truth is, if you're doing a Doom-based build, find a way to apply it more quickly. You know, just a little bit more quickly, and you get more more damage, right? Like, why do you want to? Why do you want your damage to be halved? Don't do that. Don't don't have your damage. If you're interested in seeing my video about the cast duo boons, check out the description. I'll put the link to that one where I, I break down all of the cast duo boons and how, what I think about them, how I rate them. Those are those are some of my favorite duo boons, to be honest, like those ones are super, super cool. 
Friends, what do you think of my list? Do you love it? Do you hate it? What would you rate it? <laughs> I very much am looking forward to reading comments. The last video that I did had some amazing comments. Thank you so much for coming and watching and hanging out with me. Are you excited about Hades 2? I'm excited about Hades 2. Really, really ready for another drop of uh, another news drop uh, from from Supergiant. Hopefully we get that soon. But uh, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, if it was helpful at all. And, uh, you know, I make these kinds of videos a lot. So if you want to see that, you can subscribe. But you were, you were going to do that anyway. You're going to do that whether I asked you to or not. So we'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy. Bye.